Hi, today I will be de-lidding and lapping this cheap processor I bought off of eBay. It only cost me £1.87 and this is a test run before I actually de-lid my current 7700K. So I want to make sure that I can actually do this process fairly well before I actually attempt it on the real thing. The basket of goodies I bought for this process contains 1 gram of Thermal Grizzly's liquid metal paste, I've got some high temperature silicone sealant and some syringes to help actually apply the sealant back to the CPU lid for reassembly. Silicone only cost me 2 99 and the syringes 2 49 so altogether this isn't actually too expensive. For the test run I'm actually using my sister's computer. The cheapest process that I can buy for my motherboard will cost me about 30 to 40 pound and I don't really want to test a de-lidding and lapping process on something that expensive so I took out her processor which is actually pretty crusty looking so the thermal paste on that definitely needs replacing anyway. Um, the cheap processor I bought will fit hers nicely, I can run a little test, make sure it works fine, and then I can crack on with the de-lidding. Please bear in mind that I'm no professional at this, this is my first time de-lidding and lapping any kind of processor, fingers crossed it works out well, and if you do wish to follow the steps that I am going through, then all the best to you, I really hope it works well for you, but by no means at all is this a tutorial, okay, this is just me going through the process in my own manner. So you're going to need a pretty flat surface, I've got three bits of glass here, I am just testing the flatness between them, I've got a mirror and then I've got two bits of glass from like a photo frame. I do actually decide to go with the round one, I believe that is the most flat out of them all. However if you don't have a bit of glass then I'm sure you can find something else around the house which is pretty flat. Fortunately I actually had a load of sandpaper already around the house so I've got some 400 grit, 800, 2000, 5 and 7000 grit sandpaper all together. If you don't already have any then I'm sure you can buy some off of eBay for about 15 to 20 pounds. A pack of sandpaper isn't actually too dear. Here I've got a scalpel, it's got an aluminium back so it won't dig into my hand when I'm using it but you can also use something like a Stanley knife to actually slip under the lid of the processor and try and cut through that sealant. It was a little bit tough to actually slip the scalpel underneath the lid. I do it slowly and in small wiggles just to try and slide it under and of course be careful of your thumbs and fingers, you do not really want to slit them open. Fortunately the silicone is actually quite grippy so I never felt at any point that the scalpel was going to slip. But I took my time and slowly worked my way along it, went over twice as well just to make sure I got all of it and eventually I can just pop it up. Now to start the actual lapping process, lapping is the kind of machinist term for sanding and I've got my glass with just some, some tape to help hold it down on the, on the table to stop it shifting, just using some masking tape as well just to hold down the sandpaper and I've applied some water, just going to go in a circular motion with the CPU lid. After about half hour of sanding I do eventually start to see a little bit of copper coming through. You can see it in the corners and just on the right hand side there as well. So I'm going to stick with this 400 grit sandpaper, keep going at it until I can get all of the zinc removed exposing the copper fully. The initial sanding process did take a lot longer than I thought. It took about an hour to an hour and a half to actually remove all of the zinc but eventually I do get there and I'm pretty impressed with the current state of the processor lid. It's pretty shiny so I'm now going to work on a finely grit and try and buff out those scratches. This is now the 800 grit and I spend about 30 more minutes on this. I still continue with the water and the circular motion but I am noticing that there is quite a kind of matte finish to it. I don't know if that's the kind of chemicals in the sandpaper kind of reacting with the copper um, but I keep with it anyway just sanding it down as there are still quite a few scratches on it. This is now the 2000 grit and I'm only spending about 10 to 15 minutes on this sandpaper. 
Still, I'm getting that kind of matte finish after sanding and I'm not really happy with that. I was kind of expecting a nice shine to it by now. So I can only assume that there may be something in the sandpaper which is kind of affecting this copper. But I scrap the water and just do it dry and the finish is actually really nice. That is kind of what I was expecting once I get to 2000 grit. I'm starting to get the reflective surface, still some kind of scratches on it. So bump up the sandpaper to 5000 and see what kind of result I get. Another 10-15 minutes on the 5000 grit and I've got a really nice shine, I'm so close to actually finishing it now. Still some kind of micro scratches so I want to try and polish those out with the 7000 grit and soon after I'll be finished with the lapping process for the CPU lid. I'm really happy with how this shine has turned out. You'll have to kind of expect about 2-3 to three hours worth of sanding here. So it's not a quick job, however, the result has definitely paid off. I want to show the CPU die a little bit of care, so I'm just using the 5000 grit and then the 7000 grit sandpaper just to kind of flatten that a little bit. It did look pretty flat anyway, but just as, you know, extra measure. And for the underside of the processor lid as well, I just want to use the 5000 grit and 7000 grit just to get a slightly flatter surface. The Thermal Grizzly came with some alcohol wipes, so I'm just using that to clean up any previous silicone residue that was left on the processor and on the lid, and just to kind of clean up any, any little bits of sandpaper that could potentially interfere with the reassembly. So the silicone was a little bit trickier to actually apply than I thought. The syringe struggled to suck it up. However, eventually I did get there with it. I applied the little nozzle on the end, and I was all set to go. I'm going pretty slow and applying a reasonable amount of the silicone as well. Afterwards though I will be actually pressing the CPU lid on the glass just so I can actually see how much the silicone actually disperses out once pressure is applied. I just want to see if the amount I've applied is too much and as you can see with this little video, it is. Um, there's a little bit too much squeezing out the sides. From top view as well, you can you can see that there's a lot more than what there was previously with the actual manufactured CPU. So, so I'm going to clean it all off, reapply a slightly thinner trail of the sealant, and hopefully that will actually, under the pressure, not squeeze out the sides quite as much. There is only one gram of this thermal grizzly, so I cannot be applying it willy nilly. And this little blob that I have on the screen now is still actually too much. I had to smudge it around quite a lot and I was always ending up with a little bit of a puddle. So I moved over to the, the other side of the lid as well and gave that a nice covering too. And then left over which I thought was still a little bit too much, I just left on the actual Q-tip. It's a little bit messy, but this is a test run, so I now know how much to apply or how little to apply when I get around to actually doing the real thing. As this is more of a budget option, I don't actually have proper de-lidding tools. So if you spend a bit of money, you can get a proper clamp, or you can just nip down to your local pound store or something and get four little clamps like this. I put one either side of the processor leave it for 24 hours and it seemed to have set perfectly fine. The processor goes back into the testing computer. I fire it back up and initially I do just have a black screen. Uh, I was getting a little worried, I thought I may have killed it but I hung out and eventually the screen does change and actually boot up. Windows also loads in eventually, so this process works fine. I jump straight into testing with Cinebench 11.5, and this processor sucks. Like, it is so slow. That's <laughs> not necessarily down to the de lidding process, it's just a pretty, pretty outdated processor now. It scores a whopping 1.09, which is pretty terrible. Well, 
compared to nowadays standards anyway, that may have been fine back in this time, but the processor kind of averages out about 47 degrees under load, which is fine. I didn't do any previous testing, but finding results online of how hot this processor runs, the d process has actually reduced it by about 20 degrees under heavy load, which is pretty respectable, I think. Overall, I'm very happy with how this turned out. I'm glad I actually managed to get this CPU working and I do feel fairly confident actually carrying out this process on my 7700K so stay tuned for that. If you liked the video or found it useful then I would love if you hit that like button and thank you very much for giving it a watch. I wish you all the best of being ballsy enough to actually give the d process a whirl so hope you can get some really good overclocking results. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.